coffee, Jim, but not as we know it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Studio 5 going live on the Sunday afternoon of this day, which, of course, is Sunday. Um, today, uh, I've been working on a rebinding for a client, and I've just been finished making some very simple common made end papers. And I thought I'd like to share with you um, how I make my simple common made end papers, which, of course, are not common. This is Studio 5. Nothing's common here. But anyway, I'm just going to put this brown drink to one side. And I'm just going to go through with you how I make my made end papers. And these are very, very simple. So I'm just going to move this out. Do you like that? It's good, that, isn't it? Wasn't my suggestion. It was somebody else suggested I ought to do something like that. So you know who you are. Thank you very much indeed. So we're going to be looking at some made end papers. Now, basically, made end papers are where we have a folded white or plain colour or whatever and then a paper that's got a pattern to it there. And we basically are gonna be adhering this to this so that when you open your book up, you open it up and you will see your patterned paper and then you will see this plain paper here nearer to the text block. So a little bit more about paper later on, but what I'd like to do first of all is just go through some of the tools and things we're gonna be needing. So first of all, things we're going to be needing, of course, it's rather like a cookery show, isn't it? We're going to be needing our folders of some description. This is a Teflon, this is bamboo. Of course, use whatever you've got. And of course, our adhesive. And I've got one in this very nice tray here. And the adhesive I'm going to be using is a mixture of PVA and paste. Now, my mixture ratio, or thereabouts, is about 70% PVA and about 30% paste. Why the mix, I hear you ask? That's a very good question. The mix is very important. Now, as we know, bookbinding PVA is beautiful stuff and it dries. And this is some I've prepared earlier. And what it does, it dries very flexible. And that's very important because, of course, all the natural materials that we find in a book are flexible. They alter with atmospheric conditions, etc., etc., etc. But PVA is a film or surface adhesive. Whereas paste, on the other hand, is it sort of dries quite brittle but it penetrates and so what we're doing with the mix is we're getting the benefit of both worlds so that's what we're doing okay now obviously you know wherever you are environmental conditions you know moisture in the air and everything else you know experiment with your ratios get something that's going to work with you don't make it too wet because you could actually force the adhesive through the paper don't have it too dry because it could actually dry before you have chance to laminate anything together so that's my thing. And I also use a roller and I have this one specially made. This is silver, solid silver. I like saying that. Thank you, Jerry. And you can see that. Well, look, can you make out the little sort of the little thingy there? That's the hallmarks. Could that, isn't it? Um, and I use it with a lamb's wool sleeve. And that's important to remember. Now you can, you know, you can buy these posh ones here and this one's got a lid to it. Um, but you can perhaps find a little bit easier where you are little kits that come like this obviously not opened I've opened this up but in it you'll find you've got your little sort of thingy like that beautiful beautiful and it comes with these other sleeves as well now what you use these for I suppose is paint or you could entertain small small people or older people who's saying look it's a caterpillar with a baby caterpillar that well, I don't know make up your own mind um, but what I do is I buy separately lamb's wool sleeves and that works beautifully for the application of adhesive because you don't get any, now wait for this, you don't get any hairs or rabbits, waits for the applause, uh, falling off your roller because there are none to fall out. So you end up with clean application of adhesive and I find it is quicker as well. So putting all that to one side, um, we're also of course going to be needing our pressing boards one, two, and some clean sheets of paper. Um, that's quite important when it comes to the pressing process because you will need to press these. Standing on them or getting a large, slow moving relative to do that for you, standing on them, isn't gonna do the job. You really do need a press. Okay, now paper. Paper is very important. Now, obviously grain direction of the paper is important as well. Um, and uh, just go online, search grain direction of paper, and there'll be many, many, many pages of people explaining what grain direction of paper is. I don't want to add to that noise. You know, there are, there are other things to do, but there are two main sorts of paper. Basically, we've got a wove paper, which is something like this. It's one of these smoother papers, okay? And then we've got a laid paper, which is one of these. Now, I don't know if you can just see those lines in there, it's got all these lines and that's due to the making process. 
good quality paper such as this, those lines have been put in during the making process. Um, and the basic rule is, is that if you've got, that's nice, isn't it? If you've got um, a text block where the paper is wove, use wove paper for your end papers. If you've got a text block that's got laid paper for the uh, text block, and you know, text block paper, use laid paper to make your own papers. That's pretty straightforward. Now you know the rules. Now you can go out and break them with confidence. That's nice, isn't it? Other things with paper as well. When you're making your own papers, try and avoid watermarks. If you get them upside down and the wrong way round, they will be upside down and the wrong way round forever. And people always notice that. So try and avoid watermarks as much as possible. Another thing as well, you'll notice we, with this piece of uh, decorated marbled traditional paper, is that we've got some of the uh, colour coming leaching through onto the reverse side. Try and avoid areas like that, because if you've got a lighter toned paper going over the top, it could show through and that of course again you'll see forever in a day so always be very careful when you're buying papers try and avoid paper with excessive um, sort of bleed over or whatever now if you do want to use a paper like this um, you know you don't necessarily have to use a paler paper for the backing paper you could use of course a darker paper and that would make it slightly more contemporary perhaps anyway enough about me enough of me talking i'm going to get down to making very simply a common made end paper this is exciting isn't it now oh yes a couple of other things as well when you're cutting your end papers always make them bigger than you need okay don't try and cut the paper to the exact size and then try and sort of jiggle it together it won't happen always make sure that you've got your end papers at least a centimeter longer at the head the tail and spine edge to four edge and that will make life so much easier it means when you've made the end paper you can then trim it down to size or of course you can trim it down to size on the book whatever technique you're going to be using that's simple now um yeah if you've got a distinct pattern make sure it's the right way up and remember you've got a front end paper and a back end paper um the amount of times i see books with the patterns going the wrong way on either the front or end back end paper and somebody trying to uh, sort of tell me that oh yes it's a design feature no it isn't you got it wrong um i've done it that myself i know that little trick so always do check make a little notation which is the front and which is the back these things help okay moving on lovely lovely um what else is it that's it i'm just going to go ahead and do this now it's exciting isn't it what I always do is I always sort of spin things back. So this is my folded edge here, and this is the folded edge of my paper, which is gonna be nearer the text block. And I sort of always sort of just swing that back. So when I come to laminate the two together, it's a very easy movement to do, okay? So it's just a swing back and over like that. The important thing is to get these two folded edges lining up. That's the important thing. Don't worry about the head, the tail and the foredge. Remember, we've cut it longer. No need to worry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some waste paper, which happens to be a wine menu. Roll on July the 4th. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get everything set up. Now, I always put my adhesive onto, and if you've got a little mark on the paper, a bit of a pencil eraser there just to get rid of stuff. Make sure it's nice and clean. Now, uh, what was I talking about? Uh, putting the adhesive on. Oh, yes. Always put the adhesive onto the paper, which is going to be nearest the text block. Ideally, when we come to press our end papers, it should, you know, in the dry, this should be perfectly flat. However, sometimes you do get a little bit of curl. And if you put the adhesive onto the paper that's nearest the text block, the paper will curl in gently, very, very gently. And that is perfectly permissible with an end paper very very much so it curling out of the book isn't uh, it looks awful it looks like the flight deck of the ark royal which of course as we all know was an aircraft carrier in the royal navy anyway moving on there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start work this is exciting isn't it so first of all i'm going to make sure that i've got the adhesive on my roller so look, i'm just spreading it out nice and evenly making sure that everything's beautiful in there and what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be holding it with my fingertips on the fore edge applying the adhesive this PVA paste mix, mix all over. Then I'm going to be putting my folded colour or pattern paper, or whatever it is, down onto that. So it's nice and easy. Okay, everybody ready? Because it's going to be fun if this really goes wrong. Anyway, so fingertips to fingertips. 
relax, go for it. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a reservoir in the middle and then I'm just gently rolling off the edge, nice and easy with this. Now, always make sure you've got more than one digit holding the paper still. If you're uh, applying the adhesive and you've just got one digit, the paper could move, it could spin slightly. And that means you get adhesive where you don't want it. So the adhesive is all over there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to slide this back because I've got to get over the top. And this is where you see the top of my head gleaming in the sunlight. And I'm just positioning that so it's down. So I put one corner down, slide it into position, down, consolidate with your folder, whether it be a piece of bamboo, whatever it is. Make sure that's nice and beautiful. That's easy, isn't it? Pressing board. Pick up onto the clean waste paper. Now, always use a cream, clean waste paper because it's a little bit more absorbent, it means everything dries a little bit quicker. Plus, also, it stops your end paper sticking to your pressing boards. And that is again quite important. So, pressing board on top and into the press, gas mark four until dry. Now, a lot of people they say, oh, you know, how long does it take to dry? Well, that all depends on how much adhesive you've used the atmospheric conditions, um, the amount of open time that the adhesive have. Now, open time refers to the amount of time that the adhesive stays sticky, that it's usable, and that's referred to as open time. Obviously, the wetter the adhesive, the longer it's going to take to dry, the more open time we have. Um, but of course, if you're using a dry adhesive, it may be too dry to actually get a good bond, a good adhesion there. And that is it. That is making a made end paper. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. What I will do is I will just take this end paper out of the press that we've just made. I'd obviously keep it in there for longer. But you can see how this has gone down. So waste paper just coming off there. And look, can you see this is why we have the waste paper as a barrier. And we can see that the paper is now adhered together. And we've got this beautiful, if I can open it up. Come on, come to daddy. There we go. So we've got the pattern on with this side and we've got the plain colour on that side. And that is a ordinary made end paper. Nice and easy, nice and quick, nothing to worry about. And it's very easy to do. And it will add another dimension to your work and it will sort of um, increase, you know, your, your sort of uh, skill base at being able to produce something which really looks nice and has a contrast between the opening and of course the uh, text block and the board and everything it creates this transitional thing anyway thank you all very very much indeed this was studio five going live at some time mid-afternoon ish on a sunday afternoon in a rather damp london thank you all very much indeed ladies and gentlemen be safe wear protection etc 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 bye bye